Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nick and you're watching Astro Exploring. In today's video, we are fighting back against light pollution with the Optolong L Enhance filter. I'm going to be breaking down what this filter is and why it's so important for us amateur astrophotographers. And I'm also going to share some of my raw subs and final images so that you can see the results for yourself. The Optolong L Enhance is a narrowband filter. More specifically, it is a tri-bandpass filter, isolating wavelengths for hydrogen alpha, hydrogen beta, and oxygen three. And these three wavelengths you will find in emission nebulae. And the filter can be used with one-shot color cameras, or in my case, also a crop sensor DSLR. It's important to know that this filter will not work on broadband targets like galaxies. Um, you could use the Optolong L Pro for that. The L Enhance is specifically for emission nebulae. There's three different flavors that the L Enhance comes in. You can get it as a one and a quarter inch, two inch, and a crop sensor clip-in filter, which is the version that I've got. I got my filter from First Light Optics, and I will leave a link to that in the description down below. There's lots of information on their web page about the Optolong L Enhance, so make sure you do go and check that out. If you're sat there wondering why I'm reviewing the L Enhance when Optolong have just released the L Extreme, well, there are two reasons for that. One, the L Extreme isn't yet available in a clip-in DSLR version. However, Neither was the L Enhance until a few months ago, so I, I suspect that in the coming months that will change. And also, as regular viewers to this channel will know, I image with the Skywatcher 72ED. There is an adapter that you can buy to be able to thread in uh, two inch filters with the 72ED. However, that's only available on the uh, shorter tube assembly version of the 72ED which I think went on sale after December 2019 uh, and I bought mine well before that so that's not actually compatible with my telescope anyway. But for those that don't image with a telescope and image just using a camera lens then good news the clip-in DSLR version of the L Enhance filter will work with the vast majority of lenses. All right so let's jump onto my laptop and I'll show you some example images that I've been taking over the last few months with the Optolong L Enhance. All right, so now I just wanted to take you through a few of my raw subs so that you could see what they look like straight out of the camera before and after the L Enhance. And I've also got a couple of stacked images um, in Photoshop to show you again, one before and one after uh, getting the L Enhance filter. So uh, the first thing that I want to show you is a couple of raw subs straight out of the camera. So here is two shots before and after. So what you can see on the left is an example of a two minute exposure on the Veil Nebula, Western Veil Nebula, uh, before I had the L Enhance filter. And on the right hand side, the exact same shot framed up slightly, uh, slightly differently because the Veil Nebula is up here rather than in the middle. Um, but this one was taken after I got the L Enhance. Um, now, I have to confess this is a slightly unfair um, example because my camera is modified so um, it's without the filter it's always going to be overexposed in the red channel uh, which is why I wanted to show you a couple of examples in Photoshop um, but if you see here if I zoom in here so you can just make out the outline of the veil nebula here and same again on this one you can see uh, the outline of the of the veil nebula. So, if you're comparing just raw subs on this example, they're quite similar, uh, to be honest. But in terms of the target, anyway. However, what I haven't collected is all of the light pollution and noise that comes around not having a, a filter. And with a two-minute exposure with the L Enhance filter, I'm really not pushing anywhere near the limit of exposure time that I could go to. My limit at the minute with my setup is that I'm not auto guiding, so I don't really go over two minute subs, otherwise my stars will start to be a bit egg shaped. Um, without the filter in the in the skies that I have, two minutes is pretty much the most that I can do anyway. I've, I've tried going longer, what you end up with is this whole portion of the sky here, even with a really good set of calibration frame, frames, that whole portion of the sky gets so um, washed out that um, your target is difficult to, to really um, uh, process afterwards. Um, and so I'll also just show you a quick um, image of an Orion Nebula sub. So this was before my camera was modified, so I just thought it was fair to, to show you 
that as well. So this was um, before my camera was modified on the Orion Nebula. This was actually just a 60 second exposure. Um, so now you can really see the difference in, in this one against this one, which is actually twice the exposure time. And uh, when these images were taken, they were, they were basically in, this, in the same portion of the sky. So um, it's a pretty fair comparison. And you can just see how washed out most of this image is. And adjusting the levels and having calibration frames um, does work wonders. However, it's really difficult. The, the difficulty comes in when you're trying to stretch the data to really pull out the deep sky object um, that you've that you've imaged. And with the um, Ellen Hans stack that I get, it the data is just an absolute dream to process. It is so much easier to process um, Ellen Hans data than without. And you can see that in these two photos here. So. This is six hours on the Heart Nebula using the Optolong Ellen Hans filter with my uh, 72ED uh, modified DSLR. And this is exactly the same, different target, um, obviously. Uh, it's the Butterfly Nebula. So this was, again, two minute exposures, ISO 800, everything exactly the same, except this image was with the filter and this one was without. Now I've shown you this horrendous picture for a reason. I processed this image exactly the same as I processed the Heart Nebula. And the difference that you can see is, well, it's quite frankly ridiculous, isn't it? So let's review this picture. There's just noise absolutely everywhere. You can see that I've stretched the data so much um, that we've got banding across the bottom. Um, and the curve stretches that I did and everything in these images were exactly the same. I've, I've done nothing different to this picture uh, that you're seeing on the right to the one on the left. Um, but this one is just so much better, so much cleaner, smoother. Everything about it was much, much easier to process. And I'll show you now in Photoshop the difference between the two, uh, just on an initial curve stretch. So what we've got here, this image is the raw stack out of Deep Sky Stacker, the TIFF file of the Heart Nebula image that we were just looking at. And this one here is the same um, image, the Butterfly Nebula raw stack. All I've done to these images so far is convert them to a 16-bit format and adjusted the levels so that you can see that the histogram is sort of where it, where it should be on both. So let's start with the Butterfly Nebula. So I'm just, this isn't how I process my images, but I'm just gonna do a really well ridiculous curve stretch just so that you can see what I'm talking about so like, never stretch your data like this by the way but you can see what I'm talking about here so you can already see you can see the banding across there you can see uh, there's a bit of a dark patch of sky there there's just noise all over the place and that's from that curve stretch now obviously I'm exaggerating that you would never do a curve stretch like that but that's just to highlight um, an, an example if we move now over to the Heart Nebula, again, exactly the same. I've adjusted the levels. Um, if I now go and do a curve stretch in this one, can you see the difference? Now, again, you're not going to stretch your data like this, but the noise is much better. The, the banding, is, there is a bit of banding, but it's nowhere near as bad as the other image. And if you adjusted the levels back down, then this uh, sky that started to turn grey would go back to a, a nice uh, nice black sky. Just wanted to show you those examples um, of just how powerful the L Enhance is. And I think when I was looking at the raw subs coming off the back of the camera, I just didn't quite appreciate just how uh, powerful the filter is. Uh, I mean, it's ridiculous. It's a, it's a clipping filter. It's just the tiniest little thing ever. And it has made the world of difference to my astrophotography. The pictures that I've been taking since getting this filter are of so much better quality, it's unbelievable. And I'll show you um, a few of those images at the end of this video. And if you haven't already, do check out my website, astroexploring.com. Um, I've got all of these pictures that I've just shown you in my uh, gallery that you can uh, have a look through to compare uh, with images that, that you've been taking. There's, there's loads of uh, images on there and you can see the sort of improvements that I've uh, made over time and I'll include these images at the end of the video so that you guys can check those out and if you like this video remember to give it a thumbs up 
make sure that you hit the subscribe button and also leave a comment down below let me know what you thought of this video. I'm Nick and you've been watching Astro Exploring. See you guys next time.